I am a butterfly. You have named me monarch. I originated in the American tropics almost two million years ago, over a million and a half years before modern humans. My Latin name is Danaeus Plexippus, which means sleepy transformation. The story of Danaeus in Greek mythology is one of a most unusual migration, which is fitting as my species is the only butterfly known to have such a long two-way migration. My story begins in a remote area of Mexico in the rural state of Michoacan, 100 miles west of Mexico City, in a unique range of volcanic mountains called the Trans-Mexican Volcanic Belt. In autumn, when the sun falls in the horizon, we arrive from all over the United States and Canada. It's a mystery how we find our way back to this one specific forest. We dwell in these primeval woods from November to March. Soon the temperatures will drop. No longer able to fly in the cold air, we settle in. Known locally as a sacred forest, these Oyamel fir trees provide our winter habitat. This canopy insulates us from extreme temperatures. The trees are not as dense as they once were, allowing harsh winds to blow in, leaving us vulnerable. The forest is isolated and accessible only by foot or horseback. Once at the top of the mountain, I cling with millions of other monarchs in clumps on the boughs of the trees. The needles of this fur are the ideal size for my feet to grasp. The limbs bend under our collective weight. For months, we hang intertwined. As many as five deep or cling to the thick trunk of a majestic old fir. During the coldest months of winter, unable to fly at temperatures lower than 55 degrees Fahrenheit, we hang motionless. Being still in the cool air allows us to preserve the fat reserves that sustain us through the winter. On warm days, we are able to fly, leaving the trees briefly. We absorb warmth by sunning on leaves and seek nectar from wildflowers on the forest floor. We gather at stream beds for water. Listen, have you ever heard the sound of butterfly wings? Our survival is a remarkable phenomenon. This forest provides the ideal conditions to survive winter. We have found the perfect balance of altitude and climate and roost in trees at elevations as high as 11,000 feet. In recent years, we have had to go higher in elevation to maintain this delicate balance. As winter ends, we mate before leaving Mexico. When spring arrives, we leave the forest. As millions of us fly northward, do you know what we're chasing? Milkweed! Spring unfolds northward as does our sprouting milkweed. And so we go. This is my host plant, the only plant where I lay my eggs and the only leaves my caterpillars can eat. We fly northward into the heartland. Some of us make our way through Texas, while others scatter along the Gulf Coast. It takes four generations to complete this annual migration from Mexico to Canada and back to Mexico again. Within each generation is the transformation from egg to caterpillar 
to chrysalis, to butterfly. We continue the mating dance, breeding along the northern migration route. Typically, butterflies of the first three generations live for 30 days. By fall, the fourth generation begins the journey back to Mexico. This is a special generation called the super generation. This super generation will fly as far as 3,000 miles, a staggering distance for a delicate creature. Volunteer citizen scientists tag the super generation to assist in tracking the migration. These butterflies are 20% larger than butterflies of earlier generations and live up to nine times longer. The super generation has the capacity to store more fat from nectar sources, which allows for the size, strength, and longevity needed to survive up to nine months. Abundant nectar sources are important to the super generation during the fall migration southward. These great-grandchildren of mine will mysteriously navigate to Mexican forests they have never seen, some to the very trees I overwintered in, enduring winter until spring when the journey north begins again. This complicated journey may seem mystical to you. You might wonder how a tiny creature travels to destinations it has never seen. But we do what comes naturally, following signals from the earth and the sun. A day in the life of a migrating monarch is a day flitting and flying among flowers. I search for my host plant, milkweed, which often I cannot find. The search for milkweed goes hand in hand with migration. If it is not available, I have no place to lay eggs. Because of this, our numbers have dwindled dramatically in recent decades. So much so, that our migration is possibly endangered. As we migrate, we will see many landscapes. Generations of us will be born and will die. One thing remains constant in our journey. We need milkweed. It's spring. Can I tell you all that I've survived? Last fall, I flew over 2,000 miles to Mexico. I lived for nine months, enduring a cold winter. Now, I have traveled yet again, from Mexico to you. My wings are tattered, my color faded, my days are numbered, but I am here in your backyard ready to lay eggs. I am an old soul, continuing the ancient migration of my species. The mystical monarch phenomenon is not limited to my migration. Watch my metamorphosis. Delighted to find milkweed, I cling to a leaf. I curl my body beneath and deposit an egg. I prefer to lay eggs on the underside of the leaf as protection against predators. 
the egg is tiny and can hardly be seen by the naked eye. It measures one thirty-second of an inch. As a tiny caterpillar, I remain in the egg for three or four days. The black dot moving is my head. I make my escape by eating out of the shell, and weave a silk thread to catch me should I fall. At this stage, I'm called an instar. After emerging, my first meal is the shell. Look how tiny I am compared to this penny. After eating the shell, I leave evidence you can see by eating a hole in the leaf where the egg was attached. Even at two days old, I am agile and moving about. As I grow larger, I molt into a second instar and develop black and yellow stripes. After growing more and molting again, I emerge as a third instar. I shed my skin again and again over a period of two weeks as I grow into a mature caterpillar. Each time I molt. I consume the skin I just shed. Did you know I'm designed to leave no carbon footprint? And then I begin to eat leaves again. Milkweed is the only plant that sustains me as a caterpillar. I will grow rapidly, eating twenty or more leaves and enjoying all parts of the milkweed. Including the blooms. What do you think he's gonna have for snack? A leaf. Milkweed. What do you think he's gonna have for lunch? Milkweed. Milkweed. What do you think he's gonna have for dessert? Milkweed. This is all he eats. I have a neat little trick that keeps me safe. I make a cut in the leaf by the stem, causing it to bend to hide me. And then I crawl to the end of the leaf and start eating again. The leaves on this stalk of milkweed have disappeared because I've devoured them all. I double in size every two days, while I have six pairs of simple eyes. They only detect changes in light intensity. I navigate using what looks like antenna called tentacles. In two weeks, I will grow two thousand times in size, from this tiny egg to this mature caterpillar. Ultimately, I will molt five times. My transformation is inevitable, unstoppable, and requires many moments of change, of utter surrender. With my discarded head cap beside me, I yield to stillness during this stage of metamorphosis. I am very vulnerable during these moments. Now. The time is right, and I will search for a place to form a chrysalis. I can travel twenty feet or more. The underside of a porch is a safe place to hide. I hang in a J-shaped formation after attaching to this leaf. My skin splits. 
and I swivel, swirl, and spin, revealing the chrysalis within. From the outside, I look still, but mysterious changes are happening within. For the next two weeks, all remnants of my appearance as a caterpillar disappear. Inside the chrysalis, I silently morph into a butterfly, my most dramatic transformation yet. When my chrysalis is clear, I will emerge within 24 hours. My metamorphosis now complete, I stretch and push against the chrysalis until it splits open and I make a grand appearance. Initially, my coiled tongue is composed of two pieces. Within an hour, they fuse together in preparation to sip nectar. I emerge with my hind wings visible. My body is large and full compared to my wings. It pumps fluid into my veins. Notice now that my four wings are visible. Over the course of two hours, both sets of wings expand, dry, and harden. Watch with wonder as I take to the air. Well, Charlotte, the way to tell a boy from a girl is to look on the bottom pair of wings, the hind wings. If you see a black dot at the center of each hind wing, then you know I'm a boy. If you don't see these black dots, but you do see thicker black veins on the wings, then you know I'm a girl. A boy. A girl. And yes, I do have eyes, compound eyes, which allow me to see large blocks of color. I don't have ears, but I do have sensory organs at the base of my antennae that pick up sound. I don't have a nose. I smell with my feet and antennae. My feet also have taste sensors on them allowing me to distinguish host plants from nectar plants. How do I eat? I sip nectar through a coiled tongue that functions like a straw, called a proboscis. The nectar I'm sipping here is from orange butterfly weed. You may think that this milkweed looks like a weed, but it is the only source of food for my caterpillars. As a butterfly, I sip nectar from many different flowers, including milkweed. But the leaves of milkweed are vital for the caterpillar. While there are over 100 genera of milkweed, the genus critical to my survival is Asclepius. When planting milkweed, select varieties that are native to your region Milkweed is a perennial. The leaves die back in winter, but the roots continue living in the soil, sprouting new growth each spring. It produces seeds that scatter, creating new plants, increasing the supply of food for next year's caterpillars.
Did you know I'm a pollinator? Simply by flying from flower to flower, I scatter pollen. See it here on my legs. As a caterpillar, I eat milkweed leaves, but as a butterfly, I sip nectar from annuals and perennials that have small florets within the bloom, such as this zinnia. Or from evergreen shrubs with small flowers seen in this glossy abelia. I flutter through the milkweed laying eggs. I have the capacity to lay hundreds. This is when I need milkweed most. In her book, A Sense of Wonder, Rachel Carson wrote, If a child is to keep alive her inborn sense of wonder, she must have the companionship of at least one adult who can share it, rediscovering with her the joy, excitement, and mystery of the world we live in. Is there a child in your life you can engage? The ideal butterfly garden contains host plants for caterpillars and nectar plants for butterflies. Help me, my habitat is in danger. Herbicide use and extensive mowing have destroyed milkweed indiscriminately. Create an environment where my existence and migration are no longer threatened. Create milkweed habitats. Restore the milkweed habitat in your farmland. You can make a difference by creating habitats to feed me and my young. Share your lawns with milkweed. Don't have a large garden space? Consider planting host and nectar plants in containers on a sunny balcony or patio. Citizen scientists and gardeners like you are planting milkweed along the migration route and creating much needed monarch way stations. As we migrate south in the fall, we need nectar. Please plant fall blooming flowers. I am long gone, but here my great grandchildren are feeding and storing energy for the final phase of migration south to Mexico. This super generation must build up its reserves to survive five cold months. They'll overwinter and await the warm breezes of spring when they are beckoned north in search of milkweed. Look at this magnificent marvel. This migration is considered one of the most extraordinary phenomena on the planet. If you help, my grandchildren and their grandchildren can complete their journey. And this sacred forest, their winter home, will be protected for generations to come.
Let's go. <laughs> you like me too much. That's the problem. He likes you a lot. All right. Come <laughs> on, Chumley. You got to cooperate. Ready? Come I on. told you it might take about five Let's times. All right. Ready? Let's All right. Go. Smile. On, look buddy. at the go. You're free. <laughs> <laughs> he ain't going anywhere. <laughs> Okay, close your hand back over. Now do me a favor, bring your hands up and blow hot air on the, the butterfly. Really hot air. Yeah, because really it likes hot air to fly. Okay, you ready? So smile, look at the butterfly and open your hand. How do you know? Because I heard you say it. <laughs> right here. <laughs> okay. Do they have eyes? Do you see eyes? Um, no. You don't? Mm -mm. Okay. But Are guess they what? black? Yes. So you see them? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness, is that a butterfly kiss? <laughs>